After receiving our passports by courier the night before our plane was to take off, we were ready for the adventure of a lifetime, driving from London to Mongolia. If that sounds difficult, we're about to find out that even catching a hire car in London can be a challenge. On this black car arriving, what black, what black car is that? As my brother struggled to understand the English-speaking black cab driver, it dawned on me that if we were struggling with this, what chance did we really have of making it through Russia and Kazakhstan? So, apparently it wasn't Lolly Park, it was valet parking, which is, happens to be over there. So we're on our way to pick up your car. Absolutely, down to uh, Billinghurst to Bipod Cars, so... Pretty excited about it, hoping that it's at least there when we get there. That'll be the first test. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, bit of history, uh, I've emailed these guys a lot of times. They haven't got a lot of emails back from them. <laughs> so I've paid for the car. It's the beast. Here it is. Look at the turning circle on that. Oh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> Yeah, there will be no trouble parking. But parking would be the least of my problems. Like blowing a little bit of smoke out the back, I can see. That's all pretty basic stuff. Excellent. Mirrors are just adjustable as well. Yep, I'll jump in and have a look. So it's got uh, aircon on it, thank God. I'll yep. make some good use of that. <laughs> yep, uh, definitely going to that. Oh, wow, that's it. <laughs> No, it Here folds down Here like a ute. Ah, it's heaps of room. Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, Matt, obviously, it's a nice little that go across there, but I'm oh, pretty much down to me. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's see how it goes, putting, putting some of our bags. All right, in. Mr. Tetris, let's see what you can do. Yeah, yeah this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Bag number one. <laughs> and it's full up. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and the car's full. <laughs> <laughs> we might have some minor concerns, but <laughs> now let's just see. I've got a pillow here, so that can fit in. Uh, hang on. Okay. Am I going to have to get the taxi driver to take me back? <laughs> bag and a pillow. These documents can go in the glove compartment, so that's good. There is a glove compartment yeah, in it, right? <laughs> how do I get to, How do I get... I can't find a glove box. <laughs> Um, there, there is there one. Is, there is. There is. <laughs> You've got a key. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is one. There is no You've got nothing. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that stuff. Hey. We were away, but could this 11 year old smart city coupe really get me to Mongolia? Only time would tell. They're in German. The instructions are in German, but I reckon we can work them out. German instructions aside, I was quite happy with my purchase. Until this. So at the moment we were making your way to Clapham, but... <laughs> and yeah, you can't right, really see this, it's hard to capture on film. <laughs> but he's not comfortable, he's not a comfortable man. <laughs> this car I've been in less than 10 minutes and it is giving me the shits. The lush green English countryside and small beautiful towns were truly breathtaking. What seems to be the problem? Uh, we have a little bit of a moisturiser spill. <laughs> <laughs> What's that my, document? Uh, this document is my international licence, so uh, yet, yet to be displayed to anyone. Is your car driving well? Car drives pretty well, it doesn't take off too fast. Uh, that's a bit of an issue, it's, it's been a cause for concern. <laughs> is that a slight understatement? It is a slight understatement, but I've got to say, the, what today actually turned into was um, not so much a search for accommodation, but a search for a toilet. Um, <laughs> this picture two brothers dying for a, pardon the French, a shit, for eight and a half hours, trying to find somewhere to have a shit. <laughs> Initially the idea was get accommodation and then have a shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, and we did actually finally find one at a service station. I found a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> much, much, to Will, much to Will's annoyance, annoy, I uh, I clogged it up. <laughs> we had to leave very quickly. So, so we had to wait another four hours. With my car sorted. It was time to find out whether Will's choice of car would be just as impractical and downright stupid as mine was. My car cost a bit more than yours, so it'll be interesting to see. I made sure that I had heated leather seats. Heated leather? Hang on, this is new. <laughs> did you get that put in modification or did you buy it like no, it's that? standard in the vehicle that I, I chose. Will had purchased a luxury smart car, however, that was not enough to help him to park within the lines. So Will, uh, driving along in your little beast of a car, it seems to have a little bit of grunt. What are your initial thoughts? It's actually a lot of fun. I've got paddle shift, so it's like driving an F1 car. Not quite as fast, but hey, that car just passed me. That car did just pass you, but it was speeding. Off the mark, you seem uh, a hell of a lot faster. It actually not that much difference from you driving normally to this car from what I've observed. Well, that's just me, but my biggest concern is actually getting stuck behind slow cars like you. Well, I think that concern's well founded. Mm -hmm. By the way, the speedo on this car goes up to 180 k's an hour, and that's the standard Brabus, not the tune one which I've now got. On the way to IKEA Park to go to another camping store, and at this point, um, we're past where the GPS said, and I can see no signs to IKEA Park. Still in the UK, and already lost. Things were not looking good early. However, a shopping spree for supplies and a lesson in packing up a pop-up tent left us overloaded, but confident. Do you think I'm going to have any problems with space in my car once we actually distribute this stuff? Well, it's actually ironic. You're going to have a lot of trouble with space in your car and absolutely no trouble with space in your tent. In fact, I pretty well think that you could fit your entire car inside your tent, given that you got a, it's a three to four man tent. Now, for one person. Um, therefore, you might be better off actually just driving your tent around. Take first exit to Put the sense. tent on the outside, just build it around your car. It's gonna save a little bit of space. It's not a bad idea, it's got fly windows, it just might work. <laughs> <laughs> just two days and my aircon was toast. Could it have been a bad decision to buy a used car unsighted and over the internet? So this is how difficult it is to actually get this radiator out. Actually broken a little bit of the car there. Oops. <laughs> Still can't get to it though. Both the headlights are off. The whole front of the car is off. My car's literally in bits. It's almost as though they've started off with a air conditioning radiator and tried to build a car around it. I asked Liam from Road Track Race which one of us had the better car. Um, technically, well, yep. but realistically, he's going to break springs on the first pothole he hits. <laughs> so what do you think? First pothole, Will? <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. It does leave us with a minor problem is that your car is incapable of towing mine because it's got no power whatsoever. True, that's true. So, so why, why is Will's, uh, technically, why is Will's more likely to, to bust on the first pothole? Because he's got coilover springs and they are the weak link on a sm new smart car, whereas yours has got the leaf spring, the old version. You're not going to break that, but say the first big pothole, twang! <laughs> <laughs> so that, they don't make them like they used to, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> but how big could the potholes really be? Yeah, you're at the mercy of... Oh, I'm going to get a... a three-cylinder engine, really. I'm going to get a coil of wire as well. I'm going to win bits full off it and I can put it back on. No, I'm over the head of the coach. I caught it first and you can have the same. What's wrong with the same same? No. Let's see if we're calling shotgun and food from now on. Can't get shotgun and food. Yeah, I caught the, the uh, entree first and you had the same. No, I, I said the hazelnut crunch and then you okay. call the same. Yeah. And it's just a race for who gets to see the menu first. What if we're in Mongolia? You pick up the menu first and go shotgun on the beef steak and all I'm left with is the eyeball soup. Well, that's good. So this is the routine from now on. Thank you for menu. But what happened to yours? Okay. I don't like this idea. Shotgun on food under a knife. I do not like this idea. Shotgun on food from now on. Shotgun over that crunch. You didn't say shotgun. You didn't say shotgun. No, after the You didn't say shotgun. 
Will, I bet you 10 bucks I can pick up that glass without touching it. You bushy, it. Like it's into you. <laughs> <laughs> What does it taste like? It tastes like golden gaze on it. Well, it's like a good ice cream golden gaze on it. This is bloody good. Right? <laughs> We're trying to win a gay bit. Happy rather than homosexual. <laughs> That evening, William and I had a highly intellectual debate over whether the Golden Gay Time ice cream would have been as successful had it been named a Golden Homosexual Time instead. Leicester, which should really be pronounced Leicester, but for some reason isn't, is a really fantastic place to go if you're into old stuff. We spent a wonderful few hours exploring the old town and generally getting lost. Next stop, the Tower of London. The Tower of London was founded in 1066 and has been used as a grand palace, a prison, an armory, a treasury, the Royal Mint and the home of the Crown Jewels. So we're here in London, decided to come out for a night and uh, this is what we've been reduced to. William with his tiny little umbrella, hiding, cowering in a doorway. I'm not sure if this rain is going to come out in the camera, but Will on the top of my umbrella, it is absolutely pelting down. Martin, would you say this is a pretty typical London summer's day? Oh, it's lovely. It's nice and wet. It's good for the farmers, good for the grass, good for the fruit. We love it. Having experienced the inhospitable weather in London, my friend Martin graciously offered to put us up for the night. Unfortunately, I repaid his kindness by accidentally breaking his shower, which was operated by a pool chain. Sorry, Martin. Do you know how I know that your car is going to be the car that breaks down? No, but that's not helpful. But because your number plate is W358 broken. It turns out a smart car can reach the 88 miles per hour required for time travel. I'd love to have some wonderful facts to tell you about Stonehenge, but in reality, I don't know much. Since Will was no help, let me explain. Stonehenge is a group of huge rocks cleverly placed by the ancients to attract modern day tourists. Finally, it was time to meet some of the other teams undertaking the rally and get this thing underway. Just so uh, obviously you guys, you've seen our car, we're in the, the Suzuki Ignis, what are you guys driving then? Uh, we're driving smart cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you that's hilarious because we were driving. So what's, what's funny? No, no, that's, that's a brilliant idea. No. I mean, well, you say smart cars, there's two of you, you got one each or? We do, we have one each as a backup. Oh, that's alright then. This is hilarious because we were in the car coming up, we saw a smart car and we are like, I wonder if anyone would take a smart car in the rally. Like, nah, you'd have to have one each. But you guys, are that's what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing guys, that's awesome. We also have a tow rope so that when nice. one breaks down we can pull the other. Perfect. I'm, I'm really, I'm really intrigued to see how it handles. I know, have they taken them on the rally before or? Look, we, we just thought it was, a, it's never been done before on the rally, yeah, and we just thought it was a great effort to get to the start line. Yeah, we, awesome. we were celebrating getting here, so yeah, Mongolia, awesome. that's that's another kettle of fish. <laughs> I've got 993 oh, cc's, oh, I need to go down. Okay. 993, so it's nearly 400 more than his car. <laughs> 599. What are you driving? <laughs> oh, so we win. No, you win. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben's cousin from Bipod Cars, and I think you're nutty doing it in a smart car. I've got one, so there's nothing on earth that would make me do it in a smart car. No, but I, I saw the car, and I just thought, oh, I better come and introduce myself because Ben said, You won't believe. You got, we got these guys coming over from down under, coming over to buy my smart car and I was like no because <laughs> mine's up there as well there's another black one which is yeah. mine's parked up at his car lot at the moment oh, uh, I looked at yours it was shit so I bought a silver one why do you think it's parked up at the car lot <laughs> <laughs> no they you'll um you'll have fun won't you oh. okay mm. to show that there are actually women who do the Mongol rally I think there's two groups of women That's two groups are those all so there's 365 guys and four women with the penguin. Oh, about no. <laughs> Some girlfriends do it too, I think. Yeah, I think I, the ones that are forced. Right <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> there were motorbikes, cars covered in fur, and even an American school bus. Uh, because we're just that kind of. I wasn't sure whether you were bringing school children with you or whether you intended to pick them up on I the way. Resemble that remark? No. Uh, actually, we've we've yeah. given a tour to proper school children, which is quite nice, and they enjoyed the uh, the the lift up. Like Griff. 
Um, Liff, Griff is a child, but I, I, I think he has potential, actually. Right. Here's a funny story about Chris. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I would like the this. passport. Chris, yeah, Chris forgot his passport, but remembered his static ball. <laughs> Which we're now going to attempt to. Who's the other static Excellent. Ball? No, the British seems 220. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. We're 240, they're 220, and the Americans are only 110. Oh, it's like, you know, right. who's got the biggest? <laughs> it's unlike no. America not to go the biggest with anything. It, it is, it actually it is, I have is to like say. Funny, is that like a really funny voltage. joke that you can always just say we have the biggest hey, and it's funny? You can say we run higher hertz, which it will hurt you more. Oh hurt you more. Okay. And you know, I took a Canadian to come up with that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a relations getting stronger between no, the Americans I, and Canadians. I, That's I awesome. Just, no, no, no. The next step into this descent of hell, to, into hell is, is rail gauge. <laughs> like, okay, now, our tracks. <laughs> right, you know? Honestly, it's it, it, bit of history. So, now. how many inches are you guys? Uh, no, but ours are. Do you still use inches? Because we use the metric system, <laughs> you know, it's the modern way. That's because you had to be, you're so small, you had to be precise. <laughs> Is he drawing the engine? He has an ulterior motive here. <laughs> well, it's all good. <laughs> okay, here we, we played beer pong with the English, and then William stole the shirt right off a mannequin's back. <laughs> Felix yeah. agreed to this, so it's yeah. all consent. I, I've got to say, Felix looks better in that shit than I do. <laughs> After a futile effort to introduce Aussie Rules footy to teams from around the world, we retired to our tents for the night. No one had faith that smart cars could make the journey, and the amount of times we were labelled as crazy did have us worried. So we're just approaching Goodwood for the actual uh, Festival of the Slow, the launch uh, of the Mongol Rally actually got asked by a marshal on the way in whether or not uh, we're even in the rally or whether we're support vehicles for the start of it or something like that so uh, that's the that's confidence people have in us right now starting to uh, starting to think that perhaps smart cars are not going to make it to the end but we're going to give it a fair crack hello, hello. hello. Are you am i single I'm <laughs> yes i am single <laughs> <laughs> no, no! <laughs> we'll see who's the number two driver. Just uh, one question, mate. I'm not sure if you realise this, but I'm parked in front of you, which makes me the number one driver. Well, fuck. <laughs> I'll just overtake you. <laughs> the guy obviously cannot read one and two. <laughs> okay, let's get some music going, create some atmosphere. There's uh, lots of uh, pants. Uh, Emily, what, what are we selling down here? Pants? T-shirts, merchandise, basically you need your merchandise, anything forward. Come and ask me if you've got any questions, any problems with passports, I've got all the answers. Uh, if you haven't got a passport even, if you've got your passport and, um, and you think any of you look like me, then by all means take mine. It's not a problem, okay? You, you take it, here you go, take it, there you go. Uh, it's, got, it's got an American visa in there, so I don't know if you're going to have any luck.
this is just out of Goodwood on the way to Dover. I'm not sure how we've ended up on this quite small road. A beautiful drive through the English countryside to Dover and the adventure was finally underway. So we've gone through the French border and we're now heading towards checking for the ferries to see if we can get a, an early ferry, basically. Alright, kicking the footy in France. Here we go. Driving into a large ship might be common for Europeans, but for us, the excitement of leaving England took on a whole new meaning. Excitement, anticipation and perhaps concern as to what we'd gotten ourselves into. Having watched the movie In Bruges, we were prepared for a fairy tale city, and Bruges did not disappoint. Beautiful canals, old buildings, chocolate shops, and a bell tower with exceptionally narrow stairs, it was just as the movie depicted it. Minus the filming of midgets, though. Alright, how are you going with the stairs, Will? Easy, actually. <laughs> sure. <laughs> They just keep going and going and going. Narrow, narrow. They are getting very narrow. Oh, now I see what they meant. Seems to be a problem, Will. Yeah, I've broken down already. Um, my light's coming up saying the ESP is inactive. It's turned it's not off now because I've restarted the car. The light's gone off, okay. Um, but it comes up and then the engine goes like that. When you're not pushing anything down, it's all right. So at this point in time, it appears that my car has some kind of issue and might have to take the smart to get fixed. Um, I am going to, whoever, Put in one. This thing here. This thing disables what's called the trust system, which means I won't have ESP. I won't have, which is electronic stability, something, um, or any of that. So I'm going to try putting this in and see if that fixes the problem. Um, and we'll soon find out, given that it's happened twice in the last. Half hour. 130 is the speed limit. I'm following Will, we are going as fast as we can go. Geez, you're struggling up this hill a bit, mate. So, the rules of the rally are the car has to be under 1.2 litres. So, it's going to be a small car and only two wheel drive. That is where we are. How do I pronounce it? This is your rain, go away. The owners invited us to stay for drinks after the bar had closed, an offer too good to refuse. Do you want another wine? Yes. <laughs> so well, it's been a good night. <laughs> You're just going a little bit fast for me there, Will. <laughs> I'm trying to do it one hand. Yeah, one hand while drunk. I can't keep up. All right, so, are you cold, Will? <laughs> no, not at all. It's freezing. Oh, yeah, I can't stop. I'm going a bit faster now. <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, shit. My camera would be fresh. It's <laughs> going We made it back. It was fun. And we didn't crash into each other. And it was fun. What were your thoughts, Will? We didn't crash into each other. It was amazing. It was like, I reckon it was a 1 in 100 shot. I would have taken 10 to 1 like that. Oh. Are you seriously going to make it drunk? Apparently we got Are a little you... message to mum. She's not there. Did you just drunk dial mum? Yes. <laughs> The 
the next day we found ourselves passing other Mongol rally cars on the road, despite the issues with Will's car. Could it be that the smart cars weren't such a bad choice after all? More up ahead as well. These guys are everywhere. And this is really going to piss anyone off who's trying to get around them. Given all my car's issues, I've now ran the fuel tank completely empty or very close to it and filled up with a new batch of fuel. And I'm very hopeful that all of a sudden I have more power and I'm able to drive like a normal person. I've uh, lost, well, William's lost me. What happened was he got about three cars ahead. Uh, I got stopped for an army convoy to get through. And uh, rather than stopping somewhere on the other side, he just kept going till he got to a point where there was nowhere he could stop. Followed his GPS and as much as I was on the radio saying, Will, just find a place to wait for me. By the time he eventually did, he was well off the track. So it looks like coming out of uh, that little German town, we got separated and ended up going different ways. Our GPSs, which are the same model with the same, uh, well, similar model with the same maps, both Garmin, both told us to go different ways. So beautiful countryside I'm now driving through. I haven't heard from James, so. Put some of this, this beautiful little town. Everyone's looking at me quite funny because they're not sure what the hell a Mongol rally car is doing here. Look at this old tractor. Um, turn left on my GPS turn is right. getting me a little bit lost, but this is just a beautiful place to get lost in, really. Recalculating. All right, stop recalculating. I'm doing what you're saying, you stupid GPS. Recalculating. Continue point one miles, then turn left on Ringstrasse. Part of the issue is because I guess I don't know how far point one miles actually is. Uh, if I turn it to kilometres, I probably wouldn't have this problem. But look at this. This is turn just left on Ringstrasse. Absolutely stunning. What a beautiful little town. Continue point two miles, then turn right on Martis Bergestrasse. Just cruising at 50 k's an hour. Oh, we have a smart on the side of the road that looks very much like James, with his hazard lights on. Very interesting. We find James's car with hazard lights on, but no James. I just stopped to take some, take a photo of the beautiful landscape, and who comes by but Will? So he's caught up to me. He's gone on a completely different route, but just look at this. This is just absolutely stunning up here. Miles and miles and miles of beautiful hills and little villages and there's Will <laughs> Just been informed that the Czech Republic is Klinova Castle in the Czech Republic was the site for the European launch party for the rally. You just can't say no to a party in a castle. Identical twin sisters. no And uh, that was a little random. Uh, how much? I'm just leaving it there for later. How much vodka was in that? It's about 700. I'm drunk last <laughs> one. Check. I do not smoke. Your chance. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Oh, He's just going to drink your beer out there. <laughs> He's just stolen your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Yet again, being robbed by a fucking Aussie. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
This party had everything. Bands, DJs, chill out rooms, food, drinks, and even a fire display. ended after he tried to evade a guard to gain access to an unauthorised area of the castle. He headbutted the castle and with blood spilling from his head retreated to the safety of the campgrounds. Hello. Hi. Oh yeah, you're on camera. Cool. <laughs> How are you going? Just about ready to go? Yeah, we're just ready to water. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. See you on All the right. road, well, Beautiful. Where's your brother? He's not behind me. I don't know. <laughs> beautiful view. I also ran into Will's car a moment ago. <laughs> so apparently James can't park. Trying to park next to me, he then ran into me. Not, not Top Gear style, completely unintentionally. Um, in a space that's... It was wide enough to fit at least two smart cars. You seem to be a bit upset about it, Will. <laughs> I'm mortified. No, I just... Gloves are off. The gloves are off. And by the way, how much driving have we done so far today? Uh, four minutes. Four, four minutes. minutes. So far. And what it, time is it? It's uh, quarter to... Quarter to twelve by my count. Quarter to twelve. <coughs> it's been a productive day so far. Mm. Which, uh, James's petrol stops, they always turn into food stops, which involves sitting down true. at a cafe. That's true, and right at the moment, I've got uh, 200 check dollars, so I'm having two breakfasts. Because How did you get 200 check dollars, James? I uh, changed from the bar from the party. Is that right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Are you telling the truth? Absolutely. Are you 100% sure on that? I won at gambling, right? I was playing poker, and I won 200 check dollars, what can okay. I say? Now, do we believe him, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> You see, that morning I had awoken to find that a girl I had made friends with at the party had left my tent, but some check money had appeared. Will joked that I was a gigolo, but as I'd simply gone to sleep, I considered it payment for room and board. We marvelled at whole towns covered in solar panels across rural Germany and realised just how far Australia is lagging behind. Um, unfortunately this is as fast as I can go. But today's the day where we're going to find a smart dealership and uh, in Germany and work out what we can do about this. The good news, apart from me not dropping my camera, is that I have a car and it goes and I'm exceptionally happy. It costs 211 euro, of which the uh, part was uh, 11, no, 15 euro, and the labour was 160 euro. So, uh, now, so what was the problem? The problem was, as Liam from Road Track Race said over the phone with absolutely no idea whatsoever apart from I have no power, a wastegate valve. So basically you've been pushing it too hard and you broke the wastegate valve? No. It broke itself. Um, I had nothing to do with it. I like my version better. <laughs> Probably more accurate as well. <laughs> so turning right here. Oh. Right, not left, right. Oh, fuck. Where's your right? My other right. Sorry, Will. Still getting used to driving on the wrong side of the road. Ah, Berlin. The wall, art, culture, museums, more museums, and even a sausage museum. Come on Germany, that's a bit unnecessary. One of the most interesting exhibits in Berlin was the Between Propaganda and Terror Wall, well worth a visit. We travelled across the bridge to an island called Faman, where our ancestors came from. Uh, we've uh, been to Bannersdorf, where 
uh, ancestors, well, uh, one of the pair, there was uh, one in, one was born in, and lived in Berg, and the other one in Bernersdorf, and uh, they got together, Oswald and I think Catherine, uh, in the 1700s. Um, actually, just while we're going past this, have a look at this. Oh my god, it's an enormous jumping castle. That is incredible. Can we stop? No. We have to stop. We're not six. Fuck off, it's a big jumping castle. <laughs> we're going to, for a walk along the harbour in Orth, which is the only town in the entire place that doesn't end in Dorf. Except for Berg. And Landkirchen. And Everything does out in Indorf apart from the ones that... There are lots of dwarfs. Where, where's the map? I was actually... Not Gollendorf, not Solsdorf, not Dustendorf, not Dorzendorf, not Wankendorf. <laughs> there was one called Wankendorf. Oh, it's Wankendorf. <laughs> are you sure? W-E-N-K-E-N, Wankendorf. Sounded like Wankendorf. You can call it Wankendorf, and it's not too far from Putt Garden. As long as if we're sleeping in the same room, you're not wanking off, I'll be happy. <laughs> More renewable energy, this time in the form of wind turbines. And I've got to say, they're actually pretty good looking, these wind turbines. They yeah. are. Probably better than the Fimanian so far. Yeah, we haven't seen too many good looking locals, I have to admit. Um, I guess that explains, you know, we were descended from these people. <laughs> so, things have been a little bit competitive on the trip. Uh, get me and William together at any stage, it's always competitive. Even to the point where uh, at a previous hostel, um, after eating all the very dense, um, rich German food, <laughs> I, uh, I went to the toilet and, uh, and I'm quite sure that that was the biggest crap that I had ever done. And uh, so I emerged from the toilet and told William this. Upon hearing it, he went straight into the toilet, <laughs> emerged 20 minutes later, and claimed to have beaten my record. Uh, <laughs> however, later, after analysing the amount of crap we'd actually eaten, uh, it was determined that it was quite probable, or almost 100% possibility, that my crap was bigger than his crap. Yes. <laughs> My bike's fine. Perfectly happy with it. James, what's wrong with your bike now? Nothing wrong with it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a problem. The seat's a bit low. <laughs> uh, we'll just, just bring it up. <laughs> so, so far we've travelled up the path from there, down here, amused some girls by falling off the bike, and we've got to here. The way I see it, we've got about 15 minutes left to make the most of Vermont. Let's okay, we've got a three, three and a half K ride there and back. Let's do it. As per usual, everything is a competition. Go! I'm waiting for him to go face first. He's running faster than I was riding. He's got every single shape. That is incredible. A 45 minute ferry ride later. Here we are in Denmark. You can tell by uh, people on bikes. You can't really tell because of the people on the bikes. There are people on bikes everywhere. They're just better looking in Denmark. I like the, uh, what, what are you doing that for again? Right, so I can fit in the hippies. Right. That makes sense. Let's check out the hippies. Here's one. Hello. Hello. Are you a hippie? Do you learn, <laughs> do you learn to shape it like this in Australia? No, no, no. I think that just... No. <laughs> it looks very, uh, yeah. He is a professional idiot. Yeah. <laughs> in Estonia, we've um, bought some very nice cookies there. Cupcakes. Cupcakes, yeah. sorry. Cupcakes. <laughs> nice red icing. 
Yes. They... Sorry? They taste good. Yeah, yeah. but it's <laughs> different from others. Yeah. Why do you think that I is? Don't I don't know what it is. It's a... The it's man a we taste. brought it from, there was a lot of smoke coming from his tent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We wonder what it was, but no idea. I figure that was his oven. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because it's cold here, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If this is not the coolest water sport ever created, I don't know what is. <laughs> Kayak polo? Having seen it on TV, right, Will thought he might have a go at planking. He's got to try to make his body ah, flat. You gotta go flat. I can't do it. She was so afraid that she was so dizzy and her head. This is it's it's crazy. <laughs> One minute ago there was nothing, and now. <laughs> The girls got very giggly, then tired, then went to the hostel to sleep. I, however, did not get giggly. The fine Danish cupcake had made me sick, then even more sick, then suddenly better, so I went out for the night. That is absolutely phenomenal. We're about to hit the bridge to go from Denmark to Sweden. Wow. Okay, this is very cool. Let's look at the GPS. So we've emerged from the tunnel and got sea on both sides of us. On a massive bridge, you can see it off into the distance. Beautiful sunshine. This is probably the best weather we've had so far on the trip. Further north we're getting the better it's going, the better the weather's getting. Who knows why? They tell us normally it's the other way around. So we've got about a three and a half hour drive to go, three and a half hours straight up the coastline till we hit Stockholm.